Hello, everybody. We are now live streaming on YouTube. This is Judge Dulce Madrigal. I'm hearing cases out of Guadalupe County today by Zoom on Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. At this time, I will call cause number 172406 CVC, present in my virtual courtroom are both parents. That would be Gerald Gonzalez as a non-custodial parent and Isabel Kathleen Solis as a custodial parent. Let me start with you, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, I know your video's on. I can't see your face quite yet. Yeah, it'd be on YouTube, to be honest. Well, I'm required to do it. Uh, I'd usually like yeah. to see people for my hearings, but at least to swear you in and identify you. Can you do that momentarily? And then I'll let you aim the camera elsewhere if you want. There you go. Uh, so state your full name for the record, Mr. Gonzalez. Daryl uh, Gonzalez. Thank you. Ms. Solis, go ahead and announce yourself with your full legal name. Isabel Solis. Thank you. Uh, Kathleen is your mother. Oh, it's about Kathleen Solis. I'm sorry. Thank you. Just start with a C and not a K. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Now, both of you raise your right hands. Let me see your right hand on the screen, Mr. Uh, Gonzalez. Do each of you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Starting with you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. And ma'am? Yes, ma'am. And you saw him brief, briefly on the camera. That is, uh, you can't identify Mr. Gerald Gonzalez being the gentleman. Who's no longer visible on the screen, but yeah, we sorry, I, I, I don't want to. I fine, but Ms. Solis, you can identify that's him. Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, just so you're aware, I'm an associate judge. I've been appointed to hear cases filed by the Attorney General's Office Child Support Unit. Uh, as associates, so we get uh, digital recorders, not official, uh, not court reporters. I'm a court of record, and that's the official record. So be mindful of that. Make sure all your answers are verbal, loud enough for the recorder to pick up in the court to hear. No shaking your head or nodding when you're answering questions. That does not record. No ahas or ahas. I need more formal yeses and nos. Uh, the second part of the recording issues, you heard me announce that we were live streaming on YouTube. It is a requirement that the courts open to the public, and that's why we're doing it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it uh, myself, Mr. Gonzalez, just so you're aware of that. Um, since we're not sitting in a courtroom for people to walk in, observe proceedings, or their courts at work, way back when COVID started, they started this, uh, this manner of letting the public log in through the YouTube app uh, to hear the live proceedings in courts. Uh, handling zoom having zoom court here after covid uh, most courts are back in their courtrooms however the child support courts have been allowed to continue on zoom and that's why we're even here because we are allowed to do so but they have required us to continue to um to be available to the public by the live stream function so we have to do it i have no choice uh, just so that you're aware and the reason i'm telling you so you don't blurt out your home addresses your social security numbers cell numbers something like that that you would not want out there on the internet identifying you because uh, if you say it i cannot take it back um, so just be mindful of that don't blurt out something you don't want out there so let me start with you, mr gonzalez is there any um, questions or concerns that i've raised uh, especially about the recording issues that you'd like to address uh no okay i know you're not liking the youtube part but uh i i don't care what your objection is i'm required to do this um miss Elise, do you have any questions or concerns or that you may have about the any of the recording issues or anything else no ma'am okay then let's go forward uh, mr valderas oh and just so y'all know everybody here in the courtroom uh participating in this hearing are on video everybody else is um staff of the attorney general's office that is allowed to be in the courtroom um as they get assignments on the other cases and or to uh sit here and be support staff for the state if necessary okay mr valderas go ahead and announce and give me a background on this yes your honor edward valderas for the office of attorney general the Attorney General's Office filed this motion to confirm arrears and modify child support on uh, April 16th, 2024. This is regarding the child Jace Isaac Gonzalez. Jace is uh, going to be 10 years old coming up here in November. Uh, the parties have both briefly conferred with our staff here today. Uh, this is a first setting on this particular motion. Uh, from what I, the state understands, Miss, uh, the state is requesting a reset so that Miss Solis can obtain further information regarding health insurance um, for the child. Uh, 
I believe Mr. Gonzalez is objecting to that. He would prefer to resolve the case today and uh, I can ask him more questions about that. But the state is requesting a reset. I believe Ms. Solis is in agreement with that. Mr. Gonzalez is not. And the state in particular, you don't have information you would need in order to make a recommendation on a final order? Correct, Your Honor. Okay, then uh, let me hear the objections and the consents. So, Mr. Valderas, you can pick who you talk to first. Okay, state will first call, Your Honor, Ms. Isabel Solis. Ms. Solis, uh, yeah. with regard to this case, um, can you tell me how is Jay's coverage for health insurance currently? He doesn't have uh, health insurance. I applied for um, Medicaid, but um, the, I guess they're taking longer than usual because they're not um, calling me. And then calling them, it's a long wait list. And sometimes I don't have that time to, I mean, the long time to sit on the phone, you know what I mean? So now I, I went back to work and um, to the school and the cafeteria so that now that I, um, uh, I'm able to get Medicaid for him. So, or not Medicaid, uh, health insurance, sorry. But I had, this is just my first week. So I need to go in and start signing him up and all that. For do, you, do you currently have the uh, cost breakdown of how much that will be for you? Not the insurance? Um, no. Okay, but it is gonna be through your current employer? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. How much time do you think you would need in order to obtain that information? Um, maybe a week or two, because um, they they said that I have 30, 30 days to um to get onto the the health insurance and stuff. So I just need to go to uh human resources. <laughs> I this, this is my first week. Um. Yeah going back to school. So it takes a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Solis. I'll go ahead and pass the witness. Okay. Okay, next witness. State will call Mr. Gerald Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez, uh, were you able to hear Ms. Solis' testimony? Yes. Um, and did you hear the request of the state to reset this case to have more time to get that information? Yes. Are you in agreement to reset this case or are you not in agreement? Mm, no, because that just delays more time. Okay. What would you like to see happen today? I just want to get the uh, child support removed and my pretty much everything returned back to me. Okay. So that I can understand your request here, your current child support is $340 a month. Is that right? No. It's supposed to be that for some reason my y'all are taking out more than y'all are supposed to be. Oh, okay. And is that because you have arrears currently? I don't know. Okay. Well, it is. And your current child support is $340. However, the state is asking for an arrears payment of $110 as well. And so that may be where you're seeing more money come out of your paycheck. But um, that being the case, are you asking? to modify your child support so that you don't have to pay child support anymore? Yes. You want to set it at zero? Yep. And why do you want to set it at zero? Several reasons. And what are those reasons? Violation of my rights. What rights were violated? Oh, I don't want to go with this. Um, so, I just, whenever the judge is ready to talk, I'll talk to the judge, like. Well, Mr. Gonzalez, you are talking to the judge right now. She is present. And that's why I'm asking you these questions. So you can explain yourself. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a lot. Um, I do not feel comfortable talking. Do you feel like you need more time to prepare for your case? No, I just don't, I'm not comfortable talking. Like, well, I don't like how, talking. How would you prefer to communicate? I don't know. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez, I'll pass the witness. Thank you. So you want to go forward to see if I said child support at zero? That's what you're uh, pushing for, Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. And for a refund for everything that I've paid. And can you give me some kind of legal basis or factual basis on which to do that? Um. 
Yeah, I can. But today's not the day. Can you give me a hand? <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's just um, it's a violation of my rights. Um, I, I was uh, pretty much forced to do it. And um, that, of course, already um, is a violation. Um, I was threatened by the, by the court order that if I do not pay, it, I will go to jail. And that is, you know, threatening me for imprisonment, um, which is wrong and a violation of my rights. Um, failure to pay is not a crime. Um, and therefore have no way to put me to jail. Um, and the list goes on. Uh, have you tried talking to a lawyer or hiring a lawyer to bring those arguments? Because we have a whole system based on laws and uh, <laughs> uh, you're telling me I shouldn't even be here doing this job, but or nobody should. Because if what applies to you should apply to everybody else too, we wouldn't be here. You, do you understand that, Mr. Gonzalez, that um, you're yeah, not so, be um, very persuasive in that area at this point and you might yeah. have to talk to a lawyer about it? Yeah, um, no, I'm good. Um, so really, I just want fairness and it hasn't been fair. And I've, you know, I'm not a, somebody who's gone. I love my son and I'm there for my son and I want to be there more. I'm supposed to have 50 percent. And she took away my time for whatever, however she did that. And I just want my fairness and um, that's it. And you think it's fair to pay zero child support? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, or she could pay me or she could start paying me child support. Oh, wonderful. And that's that, okay that for her, but not for you. That would make it fair. Like, because uh, they're both paying each other support. <laughs> It'd be equal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, do you have insurance available for your child, even if we weren't talking to, nothing about child support, just the medical support insurance for the child? Um, you know, I think on my last court thingy or whatever, I was like, they took out for that as well. I'm not for sure, though. Like, I've lost yeah, the paper. probably I haven't looked at the order so, in the case. So uh, if there's child support, there's usually somebody ordered to cover insurance and somebody ordered to pay for it. So right. she, she used to have insurance. Is that what you're telling me? And you had to pay for for it? I no idea. I was just uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it said on the paper, like that I'm covering medical insurance or something for a little you're bit. On Yes, Your Honor, just to clarify, the party's pro se divorce decree did order Mr. Gonzalez to cover health insurance through his employer. Okay, so you don't have it anymore, sir? No, I actually was jobless, oh, which is also, um, I was also jobless for a year and a half, and you guys are supposed to be taking out of my income. If my income is zero, how do y'all take out a certain percentage of zero, which means that all that year and a half that I was jobless, you guys added on to my total of no income. And um, so, yeah, that needs to be taken away. Well, I'm not going to explain the whole system to you, Mr. Gonzalez. You're better off uh, either paying for a consultation or getting a free consultation for 20 minutes or some lawyer to explain it to you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just saying y'all know that you can't take 10% okay. out of zero. So that doesn't make any sense um, or whatever. Um, it doesn't make sense to me that you think only one parent is obligated to support the child because if she had no job what does she get to do do zero two and the child doesn't eat the child doesn't get clothes the child doesn't have a roof for its head either is right, that no, i just said uh fairness so like if well okay i'm not going to argue with you i'm just trying to make some points so that you think about it uh but the question that i need to see today is that there's already a divorce decree that set things i had nothing to do with it and um I've probably has your signature on it. If it doesn't have a judge's signature on it, the state's trying to modify that amount based on the fact that you don't have insurance and somebody needs to have it. So Ms. Solis needs to try to get it. And I can't order an amount for you to pay if I don't know what the amount is. I'm not going to guess. That would not be fair. And I'm afraid, Ms. Solis, the school districts, usually the insurance is kind of costly there. Or if you had it before, maybe you know a little bit more than I do about it. But have you been a, an employee at the, the same school district before, Ms. Solis? Yes, I have. Yeah. Um, but last time I had uh, Medicaid for Jace. I didn't have him on there. But and, the and even with uh, even if it takes a while, based on your income, you don't think you'd requalify for Medicaid, or you're just um, I I need to reapply for it, re redo it now that I'm working at another job. So I have to re 
do the whole thing again. You're not going to be able to get an answer for Medicaid in a week or two, I don't think, are you? No, no because I've been waiting for them to call me. I heard that they're um, backed up or something like that. They, they've been taking a while. Okay, but you have no idea what the, it's going to cost you to have insurance through your employer, whether it's 100 bucks or 400 bucks. You have no idea. No, not yet. Yeah. Okay. Yet. Yeah, we don't know if it's a reasonable cost. We don't know, um, Mr. Gonzalez, how much, uh, what your portion should be since we don't know what it, <laughs> the cost is. So there's no way I can go forward today on a modification without that vital information. Now, again, I urge you to talk to somebody else besides you representing yourself here. Because uh, you're not going to get very far with your arguments, uh, Mr. Gonzalez. Um, the law allows this. And unless I hear something that you have the child half time, then that would be a whole different situation. But if it's regular standard visits with child uh, being in the custody of mom with most of the time, um, then yeah, I. Yeah, no, it was 50 50%. And then she decided to uh, take away my days all of a sudden. And so. Well, you know, I can't hear that now, but um, uh, if it's not as part of a court order that says you have 50%, then yeah, I don't know how you're going to prove saying. that. I don't, I don't okay, uh, I'm not going to hear your case today. I can't, but uh, tell you this if you win on anything, like the child support goes down, or I don't see I could go to zero unless you're sitting in a jail cell. And I'm not sure you want to go to jail just not to pay child support. Mr. Yeah, against that would be a violation of my rights. And uh... Well, imprisonment for not paying child support is allowed in this country. It started a long time ago, and it's still continuing. So you can argue with your congressman or your legislators or whatever you want to do, but there is law in the books that says we can do this. Um, um... I'll go ahead and reset it. Now, does the state have some reasonable recommendations, not too early and not too late? And the, the part I was getting to, Mr. Gonzalez, if you prevail and child support goes down or goes to zero, for God's sake, for whatever reason, um, it could be dated back to when Ms. Solis was served or appeared in this lawsuit. And that looks to be um, since August. So we could have a start date of September, even if I see you later in October or November, um, just so that you are aware of the law on that. So, Mr. Valderas, what's the recommended reset date? Your Honor, um there are only so many dates available, but I can go ahead and go through the ones that we have availability for. Okay. The first one would be October 8th, 2024, either at 8.30 or 10.30. After that, we have um, uh, November 12th, there's one spot available at 10.30. Mm -hmm. And November 19th, there are five spots available at 10.30. Um, um, do you know your schedule, Ms. Solis, or which they're all Tuesdays, so I don't know if you happen to have a day off or have one. I agree on the October 8th. That, that one's fine for me. October 8th, that would be how many weeks away? Let's see, one, two, three, four. You think in four weeks you'd have an answer for Medicaid and or we I should, because I'm supposed to have um, all that set within 30 days. So I and I've been working already a week, so I should be able to. I'm gonna I'm gonna go um sometimes sometime this week to go after school or after work, and go talk to the human work resources to see. Okay, because I hate to reset you again. If you come back, uh, that would not be in anybody's interest. But uh, we can't go forward until you have that information. So okay, um, okay, is the state okay with that? Considering what she has to do. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, then I'm going to set up for October 8th, and that serves your purposes, Mr. Gonzalez, to go forward quicker rather than later, October 8th. That Let's start at 8.30. This is probably going to be a contested hearing. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so, uh, you're on notice. I'm putting you on notice that you need to come back here on Tuesday, October 8th at 8.30 by Zoom. It's going to be the same Zoom ID. How the state is going to draft the reset order, send it to you by email. You get to review it and sign it. And even if you don't sign it, it is my order. So you're, and you're here in court, you're being told in open court your comeback date. So that if you don't come back, since this is a civil matter, we don't put people in jail for not coming to court on civil matters. Um, but if you're not here, you can't tell your side and you pretty much probably will lose your case. So I do urge you to come back. Without you, Ms. Solis, we can't even do this. You need to have, you have the information. Please bring it. Even if you haven't 
been signed up or started paying for it, surely they have a summary of what it costs for employee or employee plus family or plus children or however they deal with it. Bring something that shows a generic cost um, yes. if it's not particular to you yet. If you have a paycheck that shows the amount being taken out, that'd be great too. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Mr. Gonzalez, I urge you to come back. If you don't come back, you can be defaulted. You'll be less happy if you didn't participate um, in the hearing. Uh, Defaults you're, would be you're on uh, to that. lack of due process, actually. And so due process is you're given notice of court and you're allowed to appear and you've been given your due process. No, due process is you guys not investigating any of the situation. Y'all just threw me into signing y'all's contract without checking anything. And that was the lack of due process that you guys did. Are and you what I've been about the divorce decree that's this being modified? Time, this, this whole time since day one of any decree. Well, okay, go tell it to somebody else because in child support court, that doesn't carry much weight, Mr. Gonzalez. And I strongly urge you to talk to a lawyer if you have all these legal concerns about uh, what we're doing and under what authority. Yeah, because it was Please. a violation of my rights. Y'all y'all violated the rules. Y'all. If you tell me what rule I violated, I'd be happy to discuss it, but yeah, you're going to be generic about it. Process. I can't hear it. I don't have the time. I've got a lot of other cases that do require my attention as well. Yeah. So you're on notice. It's due process. You're being told you have a court date October 8th at 8.30. Please come back. You're being warned that if you don't come back, you'll be defaulted. It's all going to be put in writing. It's the same court with the same Zoom ID. Uh, I'm just giving you a new court date October 8th at 8.30. It's up to you to be back here. Um, so Mr. Valderas will draft the reset order. He's going to send it to you by email. You get a chance to review it and sign off on it. If you choose not to sign it, it's still my order. I get to sign it without you. I give a week for the process. So by next Tuesday, if you haven't signed the order, the state will submit it without your signature. Um, I've rendered the order. It's my order. I'm telling you about it. That's your due process. Thank All you. For so, uh, can, you can I ask, what did I say or do that or sign that gave you consent over me? You had a child <laughs> and a court took okay. jurisdiction over you in the divorce and yeah. they gave you a due process and they but, said whatever terms they said that was authorized, whether it was by agreement and or by a contested hearing. I don't know what happened. Court, I don't do divorces. Right? Um, I'm sorry. What? And lack of or and by uh, default judgment, uh, lack of due process and default judgment the due process is you are served with the citation and you don't show up then that's your problem you get defaulted yeah, you have the right a, to appear and if you were properly noticed you should have showed up otherwise uh, you were given due process and you failed to take advantage of it no there was no thank you sir i won't argue fine. with you any further that concludes this hearing uh, go talk to a lawyer all i need you to do is uh, leave the meeting and we'll see you october 8th at 8 30. thank you uh, I'm not really done. No, you're actually. done because I just ruled I'm not changing my ruling. I'm not going to sit here and hear your arguments that are no longer carry any weight now that I've ruled. No, but, and I've got other cases really. to tend to. You're not yeah. my only person that needs due process today. But you're not but over you. the law, though. Like, Mr. Gonzalez, I'm not to... arguing the law with you. Go talk to a lawyer, bring your lawyer back, or you go be your own lawyer, but not today. I granted the reset. It's done. Bye. Ms. Solis, you can exit. Mr. Gonzalez, if you don't exit, I'll remove you from my courtroom. You no longer uh, have any business with me before the court. Copy that. Then you want to click the end meeting button or you want there. Both parties have exited the virtual courtroom. That concludes this hearing. And I'll stop my recordings. Oh, yeah, he's a fun, fun. We're now live streaming on YouTube. This is Judge Dulce Madrigal. I'm hearing cases out of Guadalupe County today on Tuesday, October 8th, 2024. At this time, I will call cause number... 172406 CVC, present in my virtual courtroom, are both parents. That would be Gerald Gonzalez as a non custodial parent and Isabel Kathleen Solis as the custodial parent. <clears throat> Mr. Gonzalez, I need you uh, to identify yourself and I need you on camera at this time so you can tell me who you are so we can proceed uh, going forward. All right, are we on record? Yes, you heard me say I have a I'm recording it on my digital recorder. That's my official record and we're live streaming on YouTube. So it's being recorded okay. there too. And I'm gonna explain all that in a minute. But first of all, I need to identify you as parties. So if you right. show your face in the screen and then I'm gonna Mr. Calvado, would you oppose Mr. Gonzalez appearing after he after he shows himself and announces himself? Is there any reason he needs to be on video? No, no objection, Your Honor. <laughs> 
Ms. Lisa, are you okay if he, we stop the video on him during this hearing? That's fine. That's fine, but I just want you to identify him or to see his face and know that it's him okay. for the record. Mr. Gonzalez, one you. time, show your face, tell me who you are, and then you can stop video. All right. Without my consent, I'm doing this, just to let everybody know on the record. Okay. And give your name. Gerald Gonzalez. Ms. Solis, was that Mr. Gerald Gonzalez, the non-custodial parent in your case? Yes, ma'am. Okay, then you can stop your video. You can show the ceiling, whatever you want now, Mr. Gonzalez. Um, Ms. Solis, go ahead and identify yourself. Um, Isabel Solis. Okay, now I need to swear you both in. Uh, I need you to raise your right hands. Mr. Gonzalez, I can't see you, so you have to tell me when your right hand is raised for the record. Mr. Gonzalez, is your right hand raised, sir? Yeah, it's raised. Thank you. Do each of you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, starting with you, sir? Yeah. Ms. Solis? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Calvano, uh, your prosecutor's case, I assume you'll go ahead and announce yourself and give me some uh, background on this matter. Yes, Judge. Thank mm -hmm. you, Corey Calvano, for the Attorney General's Office. Judge, this case was filed as a suit for modification of support order and a motion to confirm the support arrearages. It was filed in the District Court of Guadalupe County on April 16th, 2024. Um, Mr. Gerald Gonzalez was served by citation in this case on the 10th day of June 2024 at 318 p.m. at an address in San Antonio, and that was signed by Deputy K. Bamert, um, number 331, uh, the Sheriff's County Office. Additionally, um, the parties appeared in this case uh, on it looks like uh, the 10th day of September, 2024. Uh, I don't see that Mr. Gonzalez uh, signed the reset, but I do believe that he was present um, and that there might even have been a hearing in this matter. Um, and the case was reset to today. Okay. And then uh, any opening statement with respect to the state's position on the issues before this court? Yes, Judge. Um, Judge, this is a modification of a final decree of divorce. It looks like it was possibly a pro se divorce decree that was done on January 31st, 2019. Um, the obligations that were established in that divorce decree were child support in the amount of $340 per month. And medical support was set. Uh, there was no medical support set. Mr. Uh, Gerald Gonzalez was the person ordered to uh, provide medical insurance through his employer. The modification request here today is to confirm the arrears um, in this case. And the arrears as of September 30th are $5,165.61. And to modify child support to right size it based off of the current income information of Mr. Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. And finally, to um, to request that Ms. Solis be the person ordered to carry the health insurance at a reasonable cost and then the dental insurance at a reasonable cost through her employer. Okay. Anything unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Judge, unfortunately at this time, I am unable to determine whether or not it's at the, the insurance is at a reasonable cost as I have uh, not been able to get income information from Mr. Gonzalez. Okay, but that would be mother's uh, burden to show what it cost and then. Uh, That's correct, Judge. There is a cap that we can't go beyond. So, uh, okay, I get it. <clears throat> so, uh, Ms. Solis, Mr. Gonzalez. There's been a lawsuit filed by the state. Y'all are parties in this lawsuit. You have been noticed to come to court and noticed about the lawsuit. So that's that's what the law requires. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, you have said over and over that off record and now on record that you do not consent to be here. Uh, it doesn't require your consent. It's a civil matter. Okay. You can choose to be here and you've been noticed to be here. All the legal requirements have been met so we can go forward. Uh, and you can participate, sir, and you do have to follow some rules here. It's not your court. It's my court, and I get to make the rules, and I get to 
uh, have you all follow the rules. And if you don't, there are consequences for that. Now, if you choose not to be here, you choose to log off, I just need to warn you ahead of time that you could be defaulted, which means you're noticed about this, you know about this, you're here now. And if you choose to log off and not participate, the default means we go forward without you and whatever consequences are of that, they happen because you didn't bother to stick around and finish it off or tell your side of the case. So it doesn't require your consent, it requires your participation in a civil matter if you choose to do so. And a lot of people choose not to come to court and they get defaulted. So that that would happen to you if you chose to leave. Uh, so what I was saying is uh, your parties, you're here, it's a civil matter, nobody goes to jail. Uh, that's not what happens in the civil case. It's a question of how much is owed in back pay for, for or arrears for uh, child support that was ordered and not paid, how it's going to be paid off. And the second part is where mo whether modification should be granted. And I don't haven't heard anything yet about whether child support should go up or down in this case. But that's what the modification means, that the last order can be modified or changed for child support to be higher if there's a different income and it's higher or lower if, if that's the proof that's given. So again, um, Notice has been given. We are allowed to proceed. And Mr. Gonzalez, your risk consent is not required. Um, is, do you have any questions or concerns about anything I said yet on these issues? If it is required, sir, why are you still here? Ms. Solis? You have no. Mr. Gonzalez, do you have anything else to say before I let the state call witnesses and then you get to answer questions? Uh, it is my consent is required because I'm um, just letting you know that. Um, and that's it. But no. If you want to uh, point me to a specific statute or tell me what law tells you that uh, my, you get to right consent. To, my right to live, my right to choose free will. Okay. Your right to live, nobody's taking away your, <laughs> your life. You're trying to by saying that I need your, your consent. That's me forced being forced into your courtroom right now. Well, what do you think courts are? They're where people bring disputes and disputes right, about people, you have different is, sides of an opinion, opinion on an issue. So you've been given the hold on, you. Mr. Let me, let me talk now. You already told me what you said. I'm trying to address it. You have you don't have the right to consent to what the court does. You have the right to be here and participate. And we're not taking your life away. We're not taking your civil liberties away. You're not going to be locked up in jail. The question is, how much should your child support be to pay for your children? How much should the insurance be to reimburse Ms. Uh, Solis? And those are matters that if you all cannot negotiate and agree, then this court has jurisdiction to decide the issue. And then it doesn't mean that you get to say, okay, I agree with you, judge, or no, I don't agree. If you don't agree with the judge's decision at the end of the trial, then you get the right of appeal. So you can go to a higher court and take it to them and see if I did the right thing or not. Uh, but you have a venue of appeal. That's your rights, Mr. Uh, Gonzalez. And so I, I've told you that. So now state, uh, you can call witnesses. The state's going to call witnesses one at a time. That would be you, Ms. Solis, or you, Mr. Gonzalez. They get to decide who goes first. Then the person who's testifying, you have the floor. You get to answer questions. At the end of the questioning period, then I will ask you if there are anything else that you weren't asked about that on the uh, relevant to the issues, and you'll get to give a little bit on your side uh, without the question and answer form. But during that time, the other party needs not to interrupt, needs not to make it about them. It, it, it's not about you. It's the person who's testifying that has the floor. And unless you have a solid legal objection to whatever's going on at the time, you don't have the right to interrupt. And then when it's your turn, you'll be given the same courtesy. That's how it works. So, Mr. Calvano, you pick your first witness and we'll go from there. Thank you, Judge. I'll call Gerald Gonzalez. S sir, will you... Uh... State your full on mute, please, and state your full name one more time. Gerald Gonzalez. And are you the father of Jace Isaac Gonzalez, born November 19th, 2014? I hope so, yes. Did you enter a final decree of divorce on January 31st, 2019? I don't know. I would say, I would assume yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wasn't told anything. I was just forced to sign this paper. So without my willingness or consent or knowledge of what's going on, which is, you know, not an actual contract, by the way. 
So you you did not sign the final decree of divorce? No, I signed it, but I signed it under pressure, under duress, under distress, under people like throwing all over my face and without full knowledge or percent of what's going on. Okay. And uh, in that final decree of divorce, you were ordered to pay child support of $340 per month. Is that correct? Yep. At some point, um, you got behind in your child support. Would you like to tell the court why? I didn't have a job for like a year and a half. And somehow you guys took out of 10% of zero. Yeah. What do you mean we took out 10% of zero? There's no income. You can't take out of nothing. You're charging me money if I had nothing to give. Do you agree so, that you were still under the court order at the time you were unemployed? I was never under the court order if I was forced under this contract un unwillingly. Okay. Um, are you currently employed? Yep. Where Where are you working? Why? because i'm i'm asking okay if you don't want to answer that how much do you make per hour why okay mr gonzalez the issues before the court is whether your child support is the right number or not so this is your opportunity okay. to tell us I'm what your actual hold on let I'm me finish sure. it's my turn let me finish it's your turn to tell us by answering questions how much you're making so we can decide whether the 340 is too high or too low because your well, child is down to that and the law allows it the same way it was I don't, you, I'm not asking a question, so I don't know what that answer was for. So wait till you go back to Mr. Calvano and he asks the question again. But I'm telling you that it's relevant, it's appropriate. And again, you're arguing things that are irrelevant. Uh, yeah, that you signed an order and you think you're under duress. The only way to undo it is take it to another court at a higher level to try to undo it. And that has not happened. So it's a valid court order. So right. I'm required so to look at it and to modify it if necessary. But the only way I can modify it and for it to be in your uh, in your benefit would be for you to prove what your income is and for me to decide that it's higher or lower than the last time and whether or not I can go up or down. So you okay. can cooperate with us or you can choose not to cooperate. But either way, this is happening today, whether you like it or not. And it, it, it's not a contract. It's your, I have jurisdiction over you and over this case by virtue of the, the laws of this uh, state and the court having brought this lawsuit and you being on proper notice of it. So either you answer questions and figure it out with the actual information or I'll figure something else out because we're going forward today on the state's issues and you can't keep interrupting. And you can't keep telling us we don't have jurisdiction because you don't consent. That's not the way it works. I have jurisdiction whether you consent or not. If you don't agree with my ruling at the end of this, you can appeal me. That's what your rights are. So Mr. Calvano, ask your question again. How, how much money do you make, Mr. McGonzalez, on an hourly basis? I'll withdraw the question. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, do you have health insurance through your employer? Not yet. I'm, sure I'm waiting to get hired on to the company. Are you currently employed? Yes. Uh, can you explain how you're waiting to get hired if you're uh, currently employed? So I'm, a, I'm on a temp agency. And I've been working there already for like eight months or whatever, but I haven't been hired on to the actual company. So that's where the, all the benefits are, I guess you can say. Okay, that makes sense. Um, what is your hourly rate uh, working through the temp agency at that employer? Uh, didn't you withdraw that question earlier? And I'm asking it again. Oh, so y'all like I don't I don't understand because you guys are already taking out for it. So like, I have no further questions for Mr. Gonzalez, Your Honor. I'd like to call Edna Garcia, um, if Your Honor would allow. Uh yes, let's move on. Ms. Garcia can be a witness. However, uh, if I'll need her to identify herself and also swear in, I don't think I've done that yet. So you can call. Correct, her Your Honor. <clears throat> 
Mr. Garcia, you're now on the screen. You're appearing in my virtual court. Go ahead and announce yourself with your full legal name, ma'am. Edna Garcia. And your occupation? Child support officer. With the agency? With the Attorney General Child Support Division. Okay, thank you, ma'am. If you'd raise your right hand so I can swear you in. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Colano, your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Edna Garcia, uh, who do you work for? With the Child Support Division, Attorney General. And what is your job title? Child Support Officer. And in your duties as a child support officer, do you have the need to look up income information for the customers of the Attorney General's office? Yes. And did you do that in the case of Mr. Gerald Gonzalez? I did. And can you tell the court what the most recent income information was for um, and what quarter that was for? Okay, so the most recent for the second quarter of 2024 was um, with a temp, temp agency uh, for 11,563.08 for the three months. And um, if that was the second quarter of 2024, can you tell me what the first quarter of 2024 was? Yes. So for the first quarter was $5,423.10. And that usually reports when it's a partial quarter. Okay. And then um, was were those the only two reportings for the temp agency? Yes, for this specifically. And what were the reportings prior to that? Um, uh, what was, in other words, what was the fourth fourth quarter of 2023? So for the fourth quarter, 2023, he was with a Whataburger restaurants and he earned $2,157.90 for the fourth quarter of 23. So in situations where we have such a disparity of income, is it normal then for the attorney general's office to use only the current in, uh, for figuring out a monthly average? Yes. I have no further questions from Ms. Garcia, Your Honor. Okay. Technically, Mr. Gonzalez and Ms. Uh, Solis, you all are uh, parties here, but you're also acting as your own lawyers. And lawyers have the right of cross-examination of any witnesses brought before the court. So, Mr. Gonzalez, Ms. Solis, I'm going to give you your opportunity to cross-examine Ms. Garcia if you have any questions. Let's start with you, Ms. Solis. Do you have any questions for Ms. Garcia at this time? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Gonzalez, do you have any cross-examination questions for Ms. Garcia at this time? Uh, yeah, so um, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name's Edna Garcia. I'm a child support officer with the Attorney General Child Support Division. Uh, and what do you do? I draft orders, I uh, do locates for our cl uh, customers, and uh, assist the attorneys with their legal actions. Okay. And like, so you were able to look up my income all this time, is what you're saying? Right, I was able to look up your income. So whenever I had zero income, did you look that up? Uh, you currently do not have zero income now. Yeah, yeah. But when I did have zero income, did you look that up? I probably can. Let me see uh, if you have any periods where you didn't report anything. Judge, I'm going to object to this question. No, please. no, you can't. Okay, first of all, Mr. Um, Gonzalez, Mr. Calvano didn't even get to say his objections. Or you get to say, I get to hear the objection, I get to hear your objection to the objection, and then I get to decide if it's re relevant or not relevant. So, Mr. Calvano, you want to object and finish your statement then? Judge, um, the objection is is that this this question is irrelevant, uh, Ms. Garcia. Ms. Garcia it has no obligation or duty to look up every person that is ordered under child support in the state of Texas and see if yes, their yes, income yes. has changed. The only reason Mr. Ms. Garcia would um, have a, any reason to look up information is if there is a lawsuit filed 
and there was no lawsuit filed at the time Mr. Gonzalez's income was zero. Um, therefore, under relevance, the attorney general is, is objecting. Okay, and Mr. Gonzalez, you want to finish your statement then? Yeah, this is the, that makes no sense. I've been under this lawsuit or whatever. I've been paying child support this whole time since, I don't know, my kid was, I don't know, three, I guess. So I don't know what he's talking about. I didn't know there was a time where I didn't have a child support case. Um, so I don't know what he's talking about. Secondly, like, um, if she's able to do it, she's able to do it. So like, just like he did, it, he did it just for her. He can do it for me. So, or whatever, vice versa. Uh, Mr. Calvano, I understand your objection. I, I get that we're not trying to prove or go back and modify to zero because I don't have that authority. However, I'm going to give some leeway to Mr. Gonzalez since he's pro se and he has a right of appeal anyway. So. Ms. Garcia, uh, make it my question, and uh, I consider it relevant, is uh, can you go back as far back as your record allows and start from there and just tell me what Mr. Gonzalez's history, uh, not that it's going to be used for current income, just for Mr. Gonzalez's sake, so he knows that the state has his Thank you. Thank income you. right now. Okay. Okay. So we can go back to the fourth quarter of uh, 2007. Um, but that's, I believe, that's prior far. to the, so that, is that too far? That's way too yeah, far. Uh, just, just <laughs> okay. Like uh, two years. Which years are you claiming you were unemployed, Mr. Um, Gonzalez? 2021 through 2023. Okay. okay. For the sake of argument, go to those years, 21, 22, and 23, Ms. Garcia. Okay. So, um, for the third quarter of 21 reported with staff solutions uh, reported $2,220.66 for the third quarter of 21. Did you say the number and again? I didn't, I didn't quite hear it in full. The number? $2,220.66. Okay. Okay. So then we uh, go to the fourth quarter. I'm sorry, the third quarter of 2021. That's the one you just said? Uh, it's the same quarter, but a different employer. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, he earned $3,008.80. Then same employer, uh, the fourth quarter of 21, he earned 11393 The okay. first quarter of 22, he earned 11235 the second quarter of 22, he earned $8,224.75. The third quarter of 22, he earned $10,514. The fourth quarter of uh, 22, he earned $7,465.50. And then he changed employers. And then the fourth quarter of 22, he earned $329. And then the second quarter of, there was not a first quarter of 23, but there was a second quarter of 23 for $47. And then uh, the third quarter of 23, he earned with a different employer, $1,246.95. And then the fourth quarter of 2023, he earned $2,157.90. And then we're at the current employer uh, that was already re reported. Okay. Okay. So there was a variance, but there was some uh, quarters that did appear he had the ability to earn what he's earning now and did so in the prior years. Is that, would that be your summary, Ms. Garcia? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, do you have any follow up questions, Mr. Gonzalez, of Ms. Garcia? Yeah. Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that there was that gap um, between the whole year that I didn't have a you know, I didn't have a job. Well, it wasn't 2022, 2023. I see some low, lots of low quarters. Okay. But you're back to making lots of low quarters as in like $47. Yes. So yeah, that's obviously, yeah, that's, I get it. I get it. But that's what they have. That's what they show. That's what you're trying to prove and uh, the records support it. Yes. But that no, doesn't you. mean you're not obligated to support your child under but, our laws. And, and, and I would love to, if I had a job, Thank you. I'm not going to argue with you right now. You have any more questions of Ms. Garcia? Um, nah, that's it. Ms. Solis, as a result of his questions, did that bring up any questions for you for Ms. Garcia? No, ma'am. Okay, and Mr. Calvano for the state, any follow-up uh, or anything else for Ms. Garcia? No, Your Honor. 
Okay, so no further questions, and I don't have any either. So thank you for your cooperation and uh, service here today, Ms. Garcia, you're excused. Thank you. Then I'll call uh, Isabella Solis, if it pleases the court. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Solis, um, you're the mother of well, <laughs> Jace. Gonzalez, Jason is that correct? Yes. Yes. <laughs> And do you remember entering the final decree of divorce in this case? Yes. And um, child support at that time was set at $340 a month. Uh, is that your understanding? Yes. And the final de decree of divorce also um, required that Mr. Uh, Gonzalez carry the health insurance through his employer. Is that also true? Yes, that's correct. And Mr. Gonzalez testified that he was unemployed for a while, so um, he was unable to do that. Is that correct? Um, that's what he was told told me. But when she was uh, reading all that, I didn't know that he had the little those little jobs or whatever. Okay. Um, do you currently have the child covered under a health plan? Now I do. Yes. And um, is that through your employer? Yes, sir. And do you know what the cost is just for the child to be on your health plan? Just your health plan. Um, I I sent y'all. I I forgot to make a copy for me, but I sent y'all the 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 calculation of it. But the total um, was one eighty seven and fifty cents. But I I. Don't have it written down. Okay. And my, when you say you say total was, are you meaning the medical support, dental support, and vision? No, I'm sorry. That's a total of me and him. I, I okay. Yeah, y'all have that. I forgot the copy of it. Okay, you presented the attorney general with the information on your income. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And if I <laughs> if I told you that what you provided us was a breakdown where just the child was one hundred and fifty three dollars per paycheck, would does that sound correct to you? Yes. And how often do you get paid? Um, two times a month, every fifteenth uh, and the thirtieth. Okay, so you, you don't get paid every two um, weeks. You get paid <laughs> twice a month, correct? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and do you also carry dental insurance um, for the child? Yes, I do. And if I told you the cost as you provided it to the attorney general was just for the child, $25.95, does that sound correct as well? Yes. And you're asking for to be the person ordered to carry the health insurance and uh, for reimbursement for the cost of health insurance and and dental insurance um, as provided by the law yes are you also asking for a modification to guideline child support based off of whatever <laughs> mr gonzalez's wages are determined to be yes you're not asking for above guidelines um you just want whatever the state guidelines are is that correct that's correct do you know if Mr. Um, Gonzalez has any other children other than Jace? Yes, he does. And do you know how many he has biologically born to him? One. One other one? Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to tell? Oh, well, let me ask. Um, I apologize. Um, was there at any time any other court order changing the child support from the $340 that was ordered in the final decree of divorce. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Okay, the in the final decree of divorce ordered child support at $340. Mm -hmm. Was uh -huh. there any orders after that? No. Did Mr. Gonzalez ever pay you anything directly that should be counted as child support? No. The attorney general's claim is that Mr. Gonzalez is, a re, uh, is behind in his child support as ordered by the court in the 2019 de final decree of divorce as of September 30th in the amount of $5,165.61. Is 
Does that sound correct to you? Yes. Do you believe that Mr. Gonzalez should be ordered to repay that obligation in addition to his child support to pay that down? Yes. And would would you accept that that additional or that repayment at one hundred dollars per month? Yes. I have no further questions for Miss Elise. I would ask if there was anything that um, she would <laughs> like to explain to the court that I have not asked her. I'm okay. I don't have any more questions. Um, okay, then, um, Mr. Gonzalez, you have the right of cross examination. Ms. Solis is acting as your own a lawyer, so they have to be questions relevant. I don't want you to get in a fighting match about your history or your relationship. It's about the modification of the insurance and the back pay. So, Mr. Gonzalez, do you have any questions for Ms. Solis? <clears throat> For Miss Solis, no, yes, I don't have any questions She's for her the... because I know I know who she is. But I do have questions to the attorney who's like willing to ask all this dumb stuff that we already have set up and planned out. Um, it's just it, it was irrelevant. I should have been able to object to all that. Why? Why wasn't I able to object to that? You did object when he uh, when you were wanting to that question was, no, the, earlier. Garcia, you so you would have had questions. the same objections, or if you had any valid legal objections at the time yeah. of any testimony, you could have objected. So why didn't you object? That's on you. So because y'all put me on mute. So no, when you were arguing with the court or trying to talk over somebody, you were muted, but that not was, otherwise. all that. All that information was useless that he asked. Um, Okay, that's so, a final argument. That's not que cross exam questions for Ms. Solis. Do you have any cross examination questions for Ms. Solis at this time? Yeah, so, all right. So, um, well, no, I don't have any questions for Ms. Solis. For Isabel. okay, great. Then we can move on. Right, hold on, hold on. Um, Ms. Solis, you said he didn't give you any direct payments at all uh, to make up for child support. Did he buy anything that could have been considered support for the child, especially during those time periods when when he didn't have a job? <clears throat> Um, she's not where I live, so besides food, that is not and, an objection. I asked a question, let her answer if you don't have an objection to it. Don't give me your side of it yet, Ms. Solis. Um, he there are times that he misses um visitation, so I don't know, I don't know what he does whenever he um when jace goes over there so i don't know no, i'm not but, talking but, about when, hold on i'm not talking about things he provides for the child when he's got visits with the child and he's got okay. the of the child i'm talking about things he might have done while the child's with you did he buy groceries did he buy clothes did he buy school supplies did he buy anything that could have been considered child support because he was doing it for the child not necessarily or even well even paying okay. a bill that might have helped you provide for the child nothing like that no ma'am so the only things he did was when he had the child on visits. There was maybe one time when I went to go pick Jace up from his house, he um, transferred twenty dollars, but that's that's about it for gas. Well, that was count, but um, he helped you the one time. It wasn't a birthday present, a Christmas present, something else no. like that. That, but it was considered some help, and he did it uh, voluntarily, willingly, and he gave it to you. No more than twenty dollars one time. Yeah. No, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> um, now, do you have any follow up no, questions, for Ms. Feliz, Mr. Gonzalez? It was more than that. It was like twice. Well, then you can say, Isn't it actually. true that? And ask her a question. You got to ask questions. But, to reply. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I was just saying, you know, it was more than one time. It was probably like three times. Why don't you ask there... her, Isn't it true that? And then tell, then ask her the question so I hear her answer. That's what no, you're going to do right now. I don't, I don't want to do that. Well, this is your right of cross-examination for me to hear her answer, and you're making a mistake by not doing that. Oh. Okay, fine. Then no more questions for Ms. Solis. Uh, Mr. Calvano, do you have any follow-up for Ms. Solis? I do not, Judge. Um, okay, it's, ten, it's 1032. We have a bunch of people for the 1030 docket in my waiting room. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, stop your videos in just a second. I'm going to allow the state to come in and take care of those people and put them in rooms so we can start talking to them instead of them waiting for I don't know how long for this hearing to end. So we're going to be on break. I'm going to pause my recorder. I'm going to let the YouTube continue. This is court business anyway, so I'm not going to stop that, but I will uh, pause the recorder so we're not uh, dealing with the Gonzalez-Solis matter anymore, and I'll disappear from the screen too.
And Ms. Elise, you can stop your video as well. Okay. And state, uh, Ms. Aweto, you can take over for calling docket for the 1030 cases. And Mr. Calvano, you're back. You're ready to resume? Get ready, Your Honor. Okay, uh, Ms. Elise, you're back on. Mr. Gonzalez, you I assume you can hear me. We're going to restart your case. Okay, I officially unpaused my digital recorder. That's my official record, and we can continue after that docket call for 10 to 1030 cases. Mr. Calvano, um, where were we? We were with cross-examination of the mother. You didn't have anything further for her? Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, are you calling anybody else or recalling anybody else or... Oh, I know what I wanted. If and if you don't have witnesses, um, just so that I can see it here in the courtroom, and Mr. Gonzalez, Ms. Solis can as well. If you don't mind, uh, what was it? The pay record and the insurance statements that you talked about. I'd like them to be screen shared so I can see them for myself, and the parties can as well. Absolutely, Your Honor. And uh, do you need? Uh, do I need to change the setting for the screen share? Let me look. I don't believe so. Okay. Just get this document on the screen. And I believe it's up on the screen right now. If I can call then uh, or recall Ms. Isabel Solis. Yes, sir. Ms. Solis, um, do you see the document that I have posted up on the screen? Yes, I do. And can you tell me, um, is this the, um, can you tell me what this document is? It's my um, health benefits for myself and for Jace. Okay, and uh, here it, it says effective 10-1-24. Did you just obtain this insurance? Yes, sir. And how do you know this was the cost for yourself versus the cost for Jace? Because um, when I applied, I clicked just for my, my name before I clicked on Jace's and I wrote down my my amount and then I clicked on Jace. I couldn't do it separate. I couldn't do Jace first. So I clicked so, on um, Jace next and then I got the total. Okay, from so and it was subtracted from what mine would have been. Okay, so first you clicked on just a parent or just one, uh, just yourself for insurance yes. and for medical insurance, it, the cost was $34.50. Yes. And, and then you clicked on a family plan and the total then was 18750 and you subtracted a 3450 and came up with 150. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And did you also do that for dental insurance? Yes. And yes, um this the same the the same way you did for the medical, you clicked on yourself and the cost was 1602, correct? Yes, sir. And then you clicked um, on family plan and the cost was $41.97, correct? Yes, sir. And then you subtracted $1,602 from $41.97 and came up with $25.95, is that correct? Yes. Did you also put Jace on a vision plan? Yes, I did. You understand that under the Texas law, that vision is not a requirement um, to be reimbursed? Yes. But you wanted to carry the vision plan anyway? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Okay. I have no further questions for Ms. Uh, Solis concerning this document. Okay. While well, it's still up, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, do you have any questions for Ms. Solis about this document? Um, uh, it would be good to actually see her doing it instead of it just being said that she did it um, because I think you know, that's her handwriting on the form. Is yeah, that yeah. I mean, handwriting, handwriting. But for me to actually see her do it is one thing, and her actually just pretend, you know, writing numbers down is another thing. Uh, well, there, no, uh, even as a judge, I can't like, get everything I want, Mister Gonzalez. And hearsay is kind of like, you know, it's it's hearsay. It's not really evidence or proof that that's actually what what happened. Therefore, it can't really be admitted into this. Anything else? I mean, is that that's sounds you know, right? If right? you had carried the insurance and you wanted to bring that in, that'd be one thing. But for you to be objecting to her insurance, there's no way she's going to get an insurance I mean, agent from the thing, company you come to I'm court. Saying, like, there's no actual proof that that's what the numbers were. This is just going by. Um, I, I can't see it very well, Mr. Kalman. I don't know if you can enlarge it or not. But the light, yeah, there you go. The, the part on the left that's not her handwriting. 
what does it say benefit plan that's the basic life with uh what is it uh, with both her and jace the 18750 so the proof is that it costs for both that amount and we're taking well she's this is supposed to be sworn testimony that she couldn't print anything else so the uh she figured out you don't have the piece of paper that says yours was 3450 miss Elise. no ma'am i don't and here on a stack of bibles you'd be telling me that you're not making that 30 dollars. I, I promise i am not lying about it okay so we have proof that it's the amount of 187.50 for the total now for the medical i'm seeing on screen share the um again the oh, we're, go further down again mr on the medical there you go or the dental rather the total is a 4197 number that she's testified to that's a dental high plan why did she pick the dental high plan i guess that's a question miss solis can you answer that not, there was only two good. plans and they're only like like a dollar or two difference they, they mm -hmm. weren't even it wasn't even a so now it's likes instead of actually being you know if you want to provide it you want to bring proof of it fine this is what she decided to get and that's what we're questioning how am i supposed to get proof of it no if you had if you wanted to provide the insurers or you were ordered to provide the oh, insurers, I mean, you I didn't do it so I now you're stuck it. with her her evidence here today and her sworn testimony so well, Ms. Solis, again, but, the yeah. difference between the plan you picked and the plan that was still there that might have been a little cheaper is not but a few dollars is that what you said yes yes ma'am that was for the it was day. only a couple of dollars down <clears throat> okay but it did um it's his is still higher than yours and it's only a few dollars difference but uh you'd be you um made it less because of he's not supposed to cover you just the child so yes ma'am what you're telling me child's portion is 25 dollars and 95 cents yes ma'am okay and then vision um, well we're not going to be able to help you with vision but that's only a few dollars as well a total of two dollars and 71 cents and okay. this is i am paying these um two two times a month so like each paycheck they're taking it out that's the total monthly amount the 180 yes the 187 yes. they're taking out uh, well the 153 for jace the 153 they've taken out for each paycheck and then they're taking out the 25.95 for each paycheck that's different from what i heard earlier mr kalana you want to address that or clarify that yes um miss miss Elise, <laughs> Um, so the amounts that were just shown on the screen, those are um, those are not monthly costs. Those were costs per paycheck. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Does it and, say it on the piece of paper? I missed. I wasn't looking for that part. It, <laughs> it does say semi the semi payroll. But why wouldn't it say that it's monthly or bi or bi monthly? Let's see. It's a little bit down. Right there, total semi monthly payment payroll deduction. Okay, well, the state didn't get that either when we were testifying uh, because now you're saying you want double. No, I'm just I'm just saying that I'm just telling you that's that's what um, I'm getting charged for. Uh, it, I mean, it's they're taking it out for each paycheck. That's I'm just stating that that it's okay well we didn't get that the first time now it sounds like oh now it sounds like hearsay and a lot of weird stuff so mr Calvano, anything further for miss Solis? i i thought i i had told mr Calvano, right that's correct uh, when i when i had got paid like i got paid and it was times two and and she did your honor and that was the purpose and me asking her very specifically why she or how she got paid um yeah. when i asked her that she didn't get paid you know every two weeks got paid on a semi-monthly basis i get paid um, 15th and the 30th because those costs came out of each paycheck and the, then they would need to be combined for a total monthly amount yeah well i hadn't heard that part yet so i was trying to clarify what i just saw and heard now heard uh, and for especially for mr gonzalez's sake so what are you saying, Mr. Calvin, or what is Ms. Ali saying about request for reimbursement? So the the <clears throat> the cost for the medical support to Ms. Lee's on a monthly basis for just the child, Jace, 
based off of her testimony is $306 per month. The cost for the dental support just for Jace, as to uh, uh, as Ms. Solis has testified, is fifty-one ninety per month, fifty-one dollars and ninety cents per month. Okay. And so that's the amount you're asking for is reimbursement, Ms. Solis. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, any follow-up questions of Ms. Solis, Mr. Gonzalez? Uh, yeah. Why um, do you think it's fair that I get reimbursed back for all the times that I've been paying for, or should I get reimbursed back for all the times I paid uh, health insurance for Jace? Because if that's what you're doing, that's what I should be able to do. And it's 50%. So you have no right, more rights than I do. I have so, him. I'm taking right. care of him okay, and right. taking the doctor and... Did you, uh, when you re decided yeah, to take my, my days away from me um, without any prior consent or anything, you think that was fair? Do you when think I, I wanted my days removed? When have I, when have I taken your days away? We had 15 okay. days of each other. We, we had a fair 15 days, 15 days, and then I fed him nuggets, and then you took them away, and then you took them, you took them away from me, more of my days. So do you think that's fair? First of all, that was when he was five years old. Okay, five so it's been four old. years that you took away and my day. And secondly, I had explained to you that he had a stomach virus and what the doctor had told me. And I gave him, I sent him to you after he was feeling a little better, but I had told you his diet and right, right. you okay. did not give, you did not um, follow through. Right. And so that um, he got sick again the week the afterwards. And then that's right. when I had told you it was for his best interest so that he can feel better. So he can be completely healed. He's going right. to make so you're, miss that. So you're not feeding him chicken nuggets. Is that what you're saying? That was that time when he had the stomach the whole virus. Time, buddy. The you whole know, time. Judge, I'm going to object to this involved. line of questioning. Of course you are. Well, Mr. Gonzalez, what you're trying to get into is stuff that I can't fix, that I cannot yeah, modify, yeah, that I cannot yeah. address. I let it go for a little bit to see if it gets it off your chest and you get to tell a judge about it and how unfair it is. Fine, we can move on with the child support part. So but if this is that. not a, a modification of visits or makeup of visits or contempt yeah. of visits or any of so that. that. But I will ask Ms. Solis, uh, is there anything in that divorce decree that says that you all get a 50-50 split possession? Yeah. No. It was already 50 /50. No. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Where does it say 50 50? Yeah. It does not say 50 50 anywhere. I don't. We have 15 days per person. No, um, you're mistaking me. You are mistaking Jace with Sabin. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You can stop. Stop. Miss Elise, you can stop. Stop. Um, I'll, Mr. Calvon, do you have the divorce decree on hand? And can you review the conservatorship sections or the possession sections to see if it has anything about 50 50. yes judge i will no, so, no, so i'm lying is what you're saying look the, there's a piece of paper that's called divorce decree it's got four corners anything that's in it is relevant and i get to review that that's what i'm trying okay. to do no. to see if you have an argument on any of this mr gonzalez but yeah. if there's a divorce decree that gives her custody and you visits and it's the standard visits then that is yeah. not 50 50 split well, that you're trying to argue we, you see when we went to court we had our own paper that was already unless it got attached case, to the divorce decree was, yeah. and says it's specific to you yes. all in this case it doesn't count that piece of that's paper exactly that's exactly what it does and that's exactly what it is and you're telling and me you read your divorce decree and under duress you signed it and it gave you 50 50. yes <laughs> okay let me the see judge, mr calvano and ask mr calvano to screen share the decree if I have to, but I don't want to do that. I, you're an officer of the court, Mr. Calvano, so whatever uh, you're working off of will be helpful to me. You want me to share it, Corey? Um, How are y'all not, I hope y'all read all this stuff. That's what I'm saying, like.
I don't know, but my son Saban, he knows. Mr. He was there it's it's not about what the child knows or what you think yes, you know. It's now it's about it. the four it's corners it. of the divorce decree, and I'm giving Mr. Calvano the time to review it and tell me what it says, yeah. so cool. that I can understand if you're right or you're not right. I am right. I'm not taking your word for it. There's a piece of paper that supersedes whatever you think you know, whatever your memory thinks you know. <clears throat> y'all should have read, read all this before. I don't know why y'all didn't read all Mr. this. Mr. Gonzalez, you don't get to put on this case of state is, and you've raised issues, so I'm trying to resolve them for my benefit. I was not a part of your negotiations. I didn't hear everything that happened back there. The state does their best, but they have thousands of cases, not just yours, so they don't get mm -hmm. to read everything as precisely as uh, they might have had they been a hired lawyer. You had the right to hire a lawyer, bring your case, you didn't. So now no, you're stuck no. with what we have to do here. And it's in my interest to find out what whether I think you're telling me the truth or not, and whether that divorce decree supports it or not. So it's not your time to talk anymore. I'm gonna let Mr. Calvano figure it out and tell me. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, in my own defense, this is not a modification of possession. There's no reason for the attorney general to read a possession order and a divorce decree when that is not on the table. Nevertheless, on page 26 of 29 of the divorce decree, it is a standard possession order. Parent A is named as Isabel Gonzalez. Parent B is Gerald Gonzalez. It does have a mutual agreement um, section where the parties can deviate from the standard possession order if it's by mutual agreement. The oh, rest of it, the rest of it has the the weekend provisions at the time the child uh, uh, for parent B on the first, third, and fifth Friday each month at the time the child school is regularly dismissed and ending at six p.m. the following Sunday. It has uh, weekends extended by a holiday at the time the child school is regularly dismissed. And on Thursdays at the time the child school is regularly dismissed in spring break. I don't see any uh, provisions that have anything to do with 50-50, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it was 50-50 and then uh, we she unmutually agreed by herself to take away my days and yeah so if she couldn't do that she violated the court there you go is there a piece of paper that you filed with the court that says you had an agreement at a certain time and then uh, that you revoked it miss elise anything additional to oh, the man um the only the only thing that i signed for the was the standard the standard court order the mutual agreement that he's talking about was before when we got it notarized before the court order before yeah. all that stuff happened yeah, and we went right. to court gerald i'm talking when we went to court then that's when the the divorce decree and the standard court order so in my knowledge i would think that the court order overpowers anything that has to do with before that nope okay but the court and the judge signed it and notarized it or and you didn't uh, do a new agreement after that divorce decree to reinstitute the 50 50. No, ma'am, we did not. The yeah, only talk about good. it, did you remember talking about it at least that you're going to the divorce decree and not that piece of paper you did before the divorce? Um, talk about it with Mr. Uh, so every, one, every once in a while, I, I don't even know why he's complaining right now because every once in a while, um, when, when Jason's sick one day, I let him have my weekend and I let him go to him on on those days because I think about how Jace misses. So like we we work it out every once in a while like like that like for Jace. Okay. okay. But you never went back to the 15 days, 15 days or whatever, Mr. Yeah, 15 days each that Mr. Gonzalez says happened before. I don't, you didn't go I don't back even remember happened. the 15 days. He's thinking of I, like I really don't even remember the 15 days, but everything was the same exact thing. Okay. As it is, um, Your divorce decree doesn't have an attachment that includes that 15-15 split. Babe. It does not, Your Honor. 
State it, says it doesn't. Yours doesn't either. Miss Solis, your copy of it. No, yeah. ma'am. Okay, should have came with it because the guy, the judge. Mr. Gonzalez, unless you have it. a piece of paper that has it as an official page to a divorce decree and it's a certified copy of it, I can't take your word for it. The state has a copy of the official version, so that's what I'm going on. So I've given the visitation issue plenty of discussion now, Mr. Gonzalez, and whether you like it or not, it's no longer relevant. Um, okay. So did. we did the well, insurance cost. I'm, I'm, we I'm did the FINA. Mr. Calvano, can you screen share the financial activity report, the pay record that shows the arrears? Absolutely, Judge. Judge, yes, on the screen, screen you'll, you'll see the financial activity report. This is um, from the beginning of the obligation in 2019. This is uh, the official activity report printed um, uh, at today just a few moments ago and it's dated october 8th today and then how many pages of the pay record it is seven <laughs> pages long okay and we saw that child support of 340 started march 1st 2019 we see payments along the way and if you'll get to the bottom of page seven i guess and you were asking for arrears uh findings as of September 30th, do I remember that right? That's correct, Judge. And that is right here, the third line up from the bottom. And okay. that number, sorry, need glasses, $5,165.61. and sixty-one cents. Five one six five six one. as of September 30th, I see that. Um, do you see that, Mr. Gonzalez? Um, I have an arrow right on the, or I don't know if you can see my arrow, you can see the state's arrow. Mr. Gonzalez, you see the number 5165 and 61 cents? Yeah. And, and all the way on the other side is as of September 30th, that's where that number comes from. So uh, we're not including October, what was due and what's already been paid. It goes only as of September 30th. Do you have any dispute with that number, sir? Oh, yeah. You're, you already know. What's your dispute? The whole year and a half, I didn't have income. Okay, you're saying out. your child support should have just automatically stopped no matter whether you had a job right, or not. Right, because you cannot take okay, money you, out of zero. Yes. Uh, I the get math, your argument. That makes you. sense. Thank you. Anything else? I think I've got the information so I need for, for the record, Mr. Calvano. Anything else you need to present? Um, so I should like, take away what I, half of what I owe, at least, because um, I didn't work. So okay, let's it's not go that to I wasn't really willing to pay. You think it's um, fair to that. stop child support because you weren't able to? Yes, because you weren't you able to earn any money. Zero. So she had to pay 100% of everything herself, even if she had a job or didn't have a job. That's what you're that saying? Would be, that would be a responsible parent. Yeah. <laughs> responsible parent owns up to what he owes and catches up. And, and right, you, that's you what I'm do trying what you to do. Good I'm at sorry the time. That jobs didn't hire me. It's my fault that jobs didn't hire me. No, I'm not saying it's anybody's okay, fault. I'm saying, saying you exactly. still had a legal so obligation to support your child, whether or not you right. had a job. So now and you're I just making it up. And when I got a job, that's what I've been doing, right? So if I didn't have a job, obviously I couldn't do it. Do you have any other, you said you shouldn't pay because you didn't have a job. Right. And because just because like when I did have a job, I was paying it. Okay. What else are, what are arguments are you making? I'm going to let him go first. So, Mr. Go ahead and take that okay. off. And then, and then we'll talk about the real number that I owe, and then we'll keep going from there. Well, thank you for doing my job, sir. But you already gave me an argument on taking off half of the arrears. That's your position. Your argument for child support, why it should be modified, or actually, I think you're arguing it shouldn't be modified, but I haven't heard any numbers yet. Do you want to hear yeah. the numbers from the state before you make an argument, Mr. Gonzalez? Yeah, because um, well, you we already had, we already had a, uh, a signed thingy by the court or whatever for that amount and that's what it should stay if, if we're not going to follow all of it we shouldn't then case you closed have a sign thingy for that amount and it should stay forever that's what you're saying that's right because okay, thank like, you i get like your argument on that. that so you address like the arrears you address the modification and what about the she said you only paid 20 dollars toward the arrears do you have yeah. any argument otherwise um i mean why would i do documents i well, I didn't hear any testimony either about what you think you did for the child well, while you didn't have I, a job. 
Well, I fed him. I did what I needed to do when I when I could. You know what I mean? Like and that I was when you kid. had visitation with him, right? Right. Well, because you weren't feeding him when he house. was with mom. Do you want me to go to her house and she has a husband? No, so I like... expect if you can have twenty dollars <laughs> here and there, and you give them to her to help support the right. child. Yeah, I would give you credit for that. Yeah, if I had twenty dollars here and there, yeah. But you, she but, said you only gave her one twenty dollar payment at any time. So are you saying you did some more when the child was with her? I did, I did, when the child, what? When the child was with mom, not on your visitation weekends, when the child was with mom and you weren't when, earning a living, what did you do for the child? I loved him. I supported him. I gave him everything that he needs. Does it have a dollar amount? Does that need a dollar amount? <laughs> Is it, why does it need a dollar amount? Because we're talking about numbers, how much you owe. Right. So, but that's that's to the court, you know. I mean, like child support, yes. But like, I didn't have a job, so I can consider anything you did for the child. And this is the one time mm -hmm. I can do it, and never again. She said you only helped her with twenty bucks one time, and it was gas money yeah. or whatever. I mean, so, did you do anything else that. that was of monetary value that she benefited <laughs> from? Like, did you buy I, clothes? Did you, you know, give I her no something memory. else? I don't remember like I don't try to like keep money isn't a isn't a priority to well my it is son. here today you're isn't making it a real priority which, today which that you problem, shouldn't actually, owe it like which is y'all's fault really like y'all y'all think money like shows support and love for a kid and that's where y'all are wrong no the law yes, says you that's support the kid not because uh, i say so it's i'm following yeah. the law and yeah. the law yeah. says you have an obligation to pay a certain amount whether or right. not you so, have it that month right. it adds up with interest and then you pay it off later yeah. when you can so that's what this is me, about me loving my son you know i don't keep i don't keep tabs on what i pay for my son because i love my son so but it didn't help her pay her bills while you weren't employed so she had to cover 100 percent. Right. so again and that's what a responsible parent's supposed to do is pay their own bills not get help from somebody else to do it um well this is your bill that you should have been paying or need to well, pay my, now that's what a responsible bill, parent also does catches up when he doesn't my pay. bill this isn't for bill this is for child support this is for uh my son i'm hoping okay, fine um so what do so you like, think mr let me go to mr uh well it's the uh, arrears, the arrears payment, the modification, and the insurance. Insurance, what do you, uh, are you disagreeing that she should carry the insurance? And what's your argument on the insurance? I, I don't care. I don't care about who carries the insurance because I don't mind. I always, once I have, once I have insurance, I always put my kids on insurance, but I don't have a job to have insurance right now. So until That's, then. You don't have a I job think, right now, even though I heard you well, have an income I, right now? I have a job, but it doesn't provide insurance right now until I get hired on to the company. So until then, just like I've always been doing this whole time, I, you know, it is what it is. So I'm just saying if, if she's going to get reimbur reimbursement for any of that, I should get reimbursed for the time that I spent with the child which on medical support. No, because you were court ordered what? to do you were court ordered to do that without <laughs> reimbursement. It's part of your obligation. The law doesn't, doesn't support now her paying you back for the times you did because you were obligated to provide it. Right. So that's so what she's, so any she's other argument, that. Mr. Gonzalez? Any other so argument? That doesn't seem any that doesn't seem fair to the court. Then you argue it to somebody who can change the laws on that, <laughs> not me, because I'm just trying to follow the law. It, so you're saying, I, I get your argument. You don't have to repeat it. So you want her to pay you, but you don't have any pleadings for that, correct? You didn't put it in writing well, and put her on notice for today? How do I do that? Nobody, nobody, nobody's told me how you, to do anything. Well, then you didn't seek legal advice, obviously, and you didn't use your common sense. You can write a letter <laughs> to the court and ask for whatever you want, and you didn't do that, correct? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I didn't because okay, thank I you. already had the case set up. So. so for the payments, if you owe back pay, how much should you pay every month? They're asking for $150, uh, no, $100 a month. Is that, I heard that right, Mr. Colano? That's correct, Your Honor. What was the back pay should be, Mr. Gonzalez? Uh, the back pay for what? For whatever you owe in arrears payments for not paying your child support. I'm already paying it. Your past child support, arrears, oh, arrears are the past. 
how much did we take off? Um, cause I know no, like, we didn't here. do anything. You're asking me to, I get to decide. I'm so I'm asking what your position oh, is. Wait. We do I'm not do anything there. together. I am going to rule on your case after I hear all your arguments. So I'm giving you the chance. What should the arrears payment be on whatever number I order? Um, well, we, we should really get the, the main number first. No, we um, cannot do anything. You get to tell me what you want and I hear everybody and then I decide. I'm okay. last. I um, say the last well, word can so, rules. I'm already struggling as it is, um, you know, being a solo income person. So I don't know, uh, 10, $20. Mr. Colano, does he have an obligation that you're aware of on the other child? Uh, not that I'm aware no, of, Judge. You don't have a court order for the other child, Mr. Gonzalez? No, because I have 50 50 for my child. You have what? I have 50 50 joint custody with my other child. Okay. Child I'm asking, because... I'm just asking if I should consider something else. And you just told me. Yeah. So how old is the other child? Kid. How old he's is 15. your other child? He's 15. He's been there. He's seen me cry for my, my kid, others cut my son, Jace. Your child is he 15. Knows. You answered my question. Thank you, sir. I, the, his, the child's been... input on this case is not relevant. That other child. So, okay. Mr. Calvano, let me go to you. Uh, let's let you make your the argument for the state at this late date after Mr. Gonzalez has had his chance. Uh, thank you, Judge. He keeps <clears throat> muting me. Stop muting me, please. Well, quit talking, Mr. Gonzalez. That's what's happening. You're interrupting yeah, all over the place, see, so you I need to stop to talking. Have, it's Mr. Calvano's turn. I get to control this. You don't get to do this. This is my courtroom, sir. I'm not in your living room. You are in my courtroom with rules. Mr. Calvano, next, your closing argument, Mr. Calvano. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, the testimony by the child support officer was that um, Mr. Gonzalez earns um, Based on the based on the last quarter of um, income on full employment, it would be a monthly amount. It would be a monthly amount of three thousand eight hundred and fifty four dollars per month. That's a gross number. Um, the Medical support that's requested reimbursement in this case is $306. Even if, uh, even if the court orders, uh, finds that a gross income is slightly less than that because we don't have a longevity of income, um, the 9% cap by law on what reimbursement on medical support should be would be $346. Um, based off of that gross, so that could even come down a little bit. So the state believes that $306 reimbursement is appropriate, and Mr. Uh, Gonzalez would get credit um, against his gross income for figuring child support on that. The 1.5% based off of a gross of $3,854 is um, $57.81. So the dental support requested by Ms. Solis also falls under the guidelines uh, or, or the law of one and a half percent of the gross income because it would only be $51.90 that's being requested as a reimbursement. Um, there is no request for a, a, a vision reimbursement. Ms. Solis is just going to have to um, pay that on her own. That would come up with an, an adjusted monthly net resource of $2,905.02. We would use 17.5% since Mr. Gon uh, Gonzalez does have another child and guideline child support then would be $508. The state is requesting a judgment uh, against Mr. <laughs> Gonzalez for the arrearages. As of September 30th, the number is $5,165.61. I do believe Ms. Solis has um, testified that Mr. Gonzalez did pay $20 and giving him credit for that, then um, the judgment would be for $5,145.61. The state um, would not have a problem with moving the, the repayment um, 
down a little bit. The interest on the amount um, currently uh, would be right around $25 per month. So in a, in one of the ways that this, the state typically tries to determine what a repayment is, is we take it the interest, add $50 so that you're paying down some principal. Um, and in this case, that would make it $75. Um, if your honor wanted to go down um, even a little bit more, I, I, the state would not object to a $50 reimbursement payment, although I don't know if Ms. Elise would object to that. Um, the state is asking that these modifications do um, take place as of November 1st. Um, and the, the repayments um, begin on November 1st as well. Um, I didn't hear anything about it, but I have to ask any non-disclosure issues or court costs. There is no non-disclosure issues from Ms. Solis's behalf, Judge. I did not, uh, uh, wasn't able to ask Mr. Gonzalez about them. Um, and the only person that the state can request court costs from is Mr. Gonzalez. Um, they didn't want to negotiate. You didn't want to negotiate, Mr. Colano? No, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't want to negotiate. I was willing to negotiate. He just wasn't want, trying to hear it. Judge, that's a flat out lie. I not. asked him specifically if he wanted to negotiate yeah. or go in front of the judge. And he said he did not want to negotiate. Therefore, we brought no, the case directly to your honor. We have it on court order. Record. There's no record till I started the case. And once I start uh, the case, I'm involved sorry. and it's not a negotiation. It's a trial. So I've heard sorry. two versions. Mr. Calvano, you're an officer of the court. I can't believe you would be making anything up. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I told was him. Was Mr. Lisa in the room when when any of this happened, Mr. Calvano? Or you talked no, to Judge, we, we were we were in separate breakout rooms. Okay. Yeah, no, I told him I'll Your negotiate, Honor, but I'll negotiate for zero percent. And then he said, I don't want to hear. That's not a negotiation, sir. That's like a whatever, but that's not negotiating I mean. when you say you know it's my mean. terms or no terms. That's not a negotiation. They're not going to sit there and waste their time. They're going to bring you straight to me. So I get you know it. What I, mean. I get it. I get it. And I'm not calling yeah. anybody liars, but I get it. Okay. Uh, Ms. Solis, is there anything you heard from Mr. Calvano as a, with the state's recommendations that you agree, that you don't agree with? No, ma'am. Everything's fine. Okay, I've heard you what you've had to say. I'm not going to go over it again. I know what you want. You want as little as possible and as much as you can get, and it's not a consent, and you want contracts, and you want this, and you want that, and you want to be a part of it. And yeah, you, you have cooperated, you have participated, uh, but it doesn't work that way. I have right, jurisdiction so. over you. Okay, I'm going to let you say one last sentence because now it's going to be my turn and I'm going to rule. So what is it you have to say before I rule, Mr. Gonzalez, that you have to keep interrupting me with? Um, so what I want to say is I'm just as important as the mother and I have just the same amount of rights as the mother and I, there shouldn't be no reason why this court can't be completely even. Um, I love my kids. I want my kids. I want, I'm supposed to have 50, 50 with my kids. Um, so there's no reason, absolutely no reason why I should be losing and she's gaining and it's not, and it's, it's unfair otherwise. So there should be some way to negotiate. So where either we're both paying each other child support or something, because there's no there's she has no rights above me. Um, she's she's just as equal as I am, and I love my kids just as much as she does. So um, it needs to be fair, and until it's fair, then this is an unfair trial. And um, secondly, um, I just want to say also that it was uh, child support was redeemed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court ruling. For the violation of separation of powers by acquired by the Constitution, Article 3, 1, Show me 1. the paper, Mr. Further, Gonzalez. There's no way you can show me anything like that. I don't, your word on legal matters does not count. You're not a lawyer. You don't even know how you well, properly I'm, I'm hear. Say, what are you talking about? I am a lawyer. Furthermore, the child support actions are unconstitutional. Give me your to, bar number. Give me your um, bar number right now of your lawyer. To, Texas uh, bar license number. Due to the lack of per, um, 
and um, clause and wait, was it lack of? I don't know who you talked so, to, but they gave you a bunch of baloney, sir. No, it's you not have baloney. A, you have a law it's license. Baloney. Give me the bar it's, number. It's right unconstitutional. Now. It is unconstitutional. Your actions are unconstitutional for no probable cause. <laughs> this isn't a criminal court, sir. This is uh, not it a criminal matter. court. It's a Just, civil exactly. matter. So are you done no with the arguments on this specific case? I don't want to hear any more constitutional or unconstitutional Again, arguments. It's unconstitutional. If it's unconstitutional, you don't have a brief and you don't have a law license, I'm not listening to it. But, Anything but else on the facts, Mr. Pro Gonzalez? Is, that's what pro se is. Pro se is you get to be your own attorney. So I don't need to have the bar license to do that. You told me you were a lawyer, and that pro se does not mean you're a lawyer. You can what, act what like a lawyer, but not a okay, lawyer. Right. You're not licensed. So and that's why you're making one. arguments that make no sense. I'm you didn't go to law school. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez, any more argument on the so, facts? Because I'm ready to rule, sir. These are the facts. It's unconstitutional what you're doing. That's a legal argument, and uh, the and court uh, disagrees with you, sir. Okay, but, I'm but, but, but done. This is the court. court's ruling. Uh, it's my turn, Mr. Gonzalez. You've had plenty of argument. It that's is now court. Well, an hour and 21 minutes. It's my turn. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I've heard. This is what I'm going to No more, Mr. Gonzalez. Quit. Stop. Stop. You're going to stop. You're not going to talk anymore. It's my turn. Well, what are you going to do? No, like it's my turn. I told you I gave you plenty of time. You've told me you're repeating yourself now, and now I'm repeating myself, so stop. You need to solve this The issue ruling today. is this is a final order. I'm granting the modification and confirmation, but these will be the terms that the court thinks is fair, right, and just. And if you don't agree with me, either of you or any three of you, y'all can take it to a higher court to appeal me, and I'll give you that in a minute at the end of this. So on the confirmation of arrears, you don't get how the law works and you're not going to get it because it's not in your interest and you can argue all day long so go hire a lawyer go appeal me and go argue to a higher court that i'm wrong on the law so as far as arrears you owe the arrears minus the 20 bucks that she testified to so i will grant a judgment of five thousand one hundred and forty five dollars and sixty one cents that is owed by dad to mom as of September 30th, 2024. The payments on that judgment shall be. Um, objection, objection, unconstitutional. You can't object to my ruling. You don't have the the, the time or the space to argue anymore, Mr. Gonzalez. I'm done. I heard your argument. I can t repeat your argument better than you can, but I am now ruling. It's the court's turn. So you can stop the muting and unmuting, sir. Stop. I can object. No, you're not talking anymore. The arrears payment is going to be $75 a month starting November 1st. On the issue of modification. Okay. Just take a breath. Bring it down. Find a happy place. This is my courtroom. I get to talk. I'm not going to yell anymore. You're not talking anymore, Mr. Gonzalez. I'm going to finish my ruling. So you can hear all of it. You can write it down. You can wait for the court order to come through and you can appeal me. There's nothing else that you can argue, that you can repeat, that you can open, reopen testimony and testify to or evidence you can, there's no, it's done. I've heard it all. I'm making my ruling. You heard me say you owe five hundred. You owe five thousand one hundred forty-five dollars and sixty-one cents as of September thirtieth. You're going to pay that off at seventy-five dollars a month. On um, that's on the confirmation of arrears. On the issue of modification of child support and medical support, I will find that the circumstances have changed. That mother now needs to provide the insurance, and I will grant that. So mother provides the medical insurance and the dental insurance. The reimbursement uh, for that, uh, at this point, I don't agree with you, ma'am, that it should be a full 100% uh, percent of the well, 9%. I'm going to do 4.5%, which is what we routinely use, that you got a good insurance plan and it costs more for the child. Well, you're going to have to cover half of it. He'll cover the other half. So the 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 original numbers that I heard is what I'm going to uh, put in the order and remind me what they were. Let's see. 153 for uh, medical support. Objection to all that. 153 for medical support starting uh, November 1st. And for dental support, what was that number again, Mr. Colon? 
25 dollars and some change but rounded to 25. 25 dollars a month also starting november 1st so and so that if you do the math on uh adjusted net with those numbers what is the 17 and a half percent yield mr Coleman? okay you get it me? yes your honor so you get a in that case, Judge, um, the adjusted net would be three thousand eighty-four dollars, and seventeen and a half percent of that is five hundred and thirty-nine dollars and seventy cents, or five thirty-nine. Okay, I'll order five thirty-nine a month. She gets a few extra dollars of child support, but uh, he pays uh, more than that off of the medical or. Uh, less than that off the medical and dental support originally requested. So five thirty nine a month starting November first for child support. I find account. that there's a fifty fifty split so that he shouldn't have to pay. Uh, so that I should have to vary from the guidelines. So I am granting guidelines with uh, four and a half percent for insurance. And then on the issues of non disclosure, I didn't hear they did you even plead them, Mr. Kalmano? You didn't plead for any non disclosure. Um, uh, we didn't even plead for it, Judge, and it was not okay. requested by uh, Ms. Lees. So then there's no non-disclosure issues to be had in this order. And on court costs, I'm going to do you a favor, even though you, whatever, I'm just going to do you a favor. You have money, you send it to child support, I'm going to waive the court costs. He gets to win one small thing, and on the issue in insurance, I get four and a half instead of 9%. So uh, I think that's what's fair. I think that's what the law supports. I think that's what the facts indicate I should do. And now, if anybody does not agree with me, you can appeal me. The right of appeal, there's a one-page document that can be attached to the back of the order, Mr. Calvano? Correct, Your Honor. Um, so you'll put that on there, the de novo rights of appeal. But basically, uh, this is the way it works, is that I've ruled today. I've done a final order. The state's going to draft it, put it in writing, send it to you by email, so you get to look at it. Uh, first, if you agree with it, fine, you can sign it. Even if you don't agree with it, you can sign it as to form only. That means that doesn't mean you agree with the substance so that you can still appeal me. And even if you signed it, you could still appeal me. But once uh, you sign it, you don't sign it. Once I sign it from that day forward, you have three days notice or you have three days a deadline to file a notice of appeal. So whenever you get the signed copy, it comes by DocuSign, it comes electronically, then your three days start running and it would be three business days, the Monday through Fridays, the Saturdays and Sundays don't count. So at that point, within three days, you file a written notice of appeal. It has to be in writing. You have to tell the court you're appealing, it's called a de novo appeal, and you uh, put it in writing, you object to whatever you did think the errors I made, you file it with the district clerk's office, you send copies to the other two parties. So Ms. Solis, you appeal me, you send it to Mr. Calvano and Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez, if you appeal me, you send it to Ms. Solis and Mr. Calvano. You got email addresses, you can send it, put them on notice, and then you still haven't done your job by filing the request for an appeal. You have to call the district clerk's office and get a court date within 30 days from when you filed. So the, the uh, the appellate court, which would be the district judge level, the elected district judge can hear the case uh, brand new and see and see what I did and see if uh, they agree with me or not. So that's your appeal rights. If you don't do that, then you're stuck with this order anyway. Right now you're stuck with it because it is my order. And unless and until another or court overturns it, uh, it stays my order. Court. So, Mr. Calvano, do you need anything from the parties? You have their information that you can disclose in the record and including emails for the sending the copy of the proposed order? Well, let me just confirm, Judge, but I believe well, don't so. Don't do it so. on doc. Don't do it on um, live stream. No, no, no. no. Um, I'll confirm just look. On your... I assume they got notices with the note, uh, the reset orders that got sent, and what have you, besides court notice. Yeah, we have emails, Judge. Okay, so check your emails. That's where the information is going to come. This order that they're going to ask you to review and sign. And why don't you just go ahead uh, and put as to form only for Mr. Gonzalez. So if he bothers to sign it, I get it quicker. But it says as to form only, which means you do not agree to the substance of it. Legally, that's what it means. And if you sign it, fine. It comes to me quicker and your appeal starts. Or if it, you don't sign it and you have that right to Mr. Gonzalez or Ms. Solis, you don't bother to sign it. I give the state one week from today to turn it in. So it's going to happen. I'm going to sign it with or without you. I'm rendering the order because I've had a hearing and it's my order anyway. 
anyway. Uh, so I'm rendering the order and uh, I get to sign it whether or not y'all bother to sign it ahead of time or review it and sign it. Uh, anything else I need to tell these parties, Mr. Calvano? No, Your Honor. You know, I don't wouldn't mind uh, having you put the Children's Bill of Rights at the end of it. So it's a professional's versions of what parents should do and not do and how you should treat each other and talk to the child or what you tell and don't tell the child. So I'm gonna, I think it's important enough to put in there the Children's Bill of Rights. No problem. I don't need you to put in there that his verbal request that all of this is unconstitutional, including my court, including the law, it including is. this, including that. He thinks everything is can be objected to and can be found unconstitutional. Like, oh, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to put it in writing, Mr. Calvano. I'm not sure the law. Uh, Supreme but Mr. Court Gonzalez, lawyer. you talk to a lawyer if you think I did it all wrong. You go get your own know legal you advice or you go appeal me and go to a you higher court and you tell it there. I'm done. Thank you, folks, for being here. That the concludes this hearing. All I need you to do now is leave Supreme my courtroom court and check your emails from Texas Office of the Attorney General. I'm going to actually remove you all so I can get this done quicker. Thank you Miss Elise, you're gone. I think I don't think. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Off, you're if you gone. Take, if you leave first, you lose. Right. Such a child. You're because gone. I'm. I'm over. I'm done. I ruled. That's over. It, it's done. I sent her out first, so you wouldn't claim I was still talking be, to her. So I'm not talking to you either. I'm going to remove you. Let it be on record. You. Oh, I can't. For some do. reason, it doesn't let me remove him. Let um, it be on record. How to fix that? That's unconstitutional. What you did, and that. Um, no, if you want to make me host, maybe I can figure it out. Oh, I think I just figured it out. I'll do that in just a minute. Um, I'm removing you, Mr. Gonzalez. This hearing was over a minute ago. Unconstitutional. This is a, a <laughs> done. You're done. Bye. Uh, thank you, Mr. Calvano. That'll conclude this hearing. Let me stop my recordings, and we'll move on to the next. Be safe, be well, sleep sweet, and much love.